Okay, today we're going to take a flight from Kathmandu to uh, Luka, landing at the most dangerous airport in the world. And uh, we're going to be flying in the Twin Otter, so we may as well do a tutorial on the Twin Otter while we're at it. We've got a checklist here. We're uh, going to be departing from Kathmandu, and the um, lighting is a little low where it's early in the morning. So the first thing you want to do is to turn on your, your uh, night vision goggles. To release the um, lock, there's a button on the floor to push, and then you can remove the yoke by pushing Y. Uh, so following the checklist along here, you make sure that the brakes are set. And you can open the doors on this plane just by clicking on the handles, both in the front and the rear. And uh, you can open the two rear doors to for loading the passengers, etc. But the first thing you want to do in the Twin Otter is adjust the weight and balance because it's critical to flying the plane. And uh, so uh, from the uh, cockpit door, there's actually a little uh, tablet that you can pull out to uh, adjust the uh, weight and balance of the plane, as well as load your payload and your passengers, etc. So click on the toggle, the weight and balance, and then you can fill up the plane with your passengers. And uh, you want to check the center of gravity. The center of gravity is shown on the right, uh, showing that uh, where where your plane is, and that's uh, you use to adjust the trim level for takeoff and flying, etc. And if the center of gravity is too severe, the plane won't fly properly. My brother-in-law actually flies the Dash 8, which is an upgrade from the Twin Otter. And uh, he says that he always has to be fighting the trim. So the Twin Otter is a bit of a bear to fly. <laughs> and uh, the autopilot on it is quite primitive. And so we're going to um, uh, look how to um, use the autopilot to both navigate to maintain your flight level and to um, keep your speed where you want it. So the first thing you do is turn on the battery on the checklist. Uh, you need to turn on the master battery, turn on the DC, and then adjust the uh, levels of the lights for the panel lights uh, so that you can see things and eventually turn off your night vision goggles. Then turn on the lighting on the plane, uh, seat belts, etc. Let people know that uh, the plane is going to be uh, departing s shortly. And so you adjust the flight levels, the, the seat belt. And uh, then one of the things that um, is crazy about this plane is that um, quite often you have to prep the electrical system to get the GPS to work. The Garmin 550, I believe it is. And uh, if you sometimes that thing will not turn on no matter what you do, and you have to use the file menu to uh, prep electrical system. Turn on your radios, turn on your squawk box, and uh, start prepping the plane for departure. The next thing you want to do is to uh, load your flight plan. And this is a little different from uh, some of the uh, flight management systems. Uh, it's not all that intuitive. Uh, so you may need to watch a separate tutorial on how to create a flight plan. But uh, it's not that difficult to load a flight plan. It uses the .fms flight plan management system. And so once you load your flight plan in there, then uh, you're uh, um, all set for navigating, uh, following Temple the navigation route up to the base camp for Mount Everest. So after you file your, or your, after you program your flight plan, you need to file your uh, flight plan with the uh, air traffic control. And at Cotman 2, there is actually no uh, clearance and delivery, so you have to file with the uh, control tower your clearance and delivery. Center 
Canadian Express 587 ready to copy IFR clearance. Canadian Express 587 is cleared to Victor November Lima Kilo, climb via the Y B departure, with the Katsi transition, then direct to Victor November Lima Kilo expect departure runway 02. Climb to flight level 140 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 6 minutes after departure. Squad 4324. Canadian Express 587 is cleared to Victor November Lima Kilo, climb via the Igri 1B departure, with the Kimtai transition, then direct to Victor November Lima Kilo climb to flight level 140 via the departure. Expect higher clearances 6 minutes after departure. Squawk 4324. Canadian Express 587 Reback correct. Altimeter 2992 to let US know when you are ready for pushback. Altimeter 2992 Canadian Express 587. So after we get clearance um, and adjust the barometer, we need to close the doors and uh, start the engines preparing for departure. I like to use pilot ATC. I've got some crazy voices on there, including the French accent. I have German. I have Spanish. I have the Brits. I, it just provides uh, some interesting feedback uh, using pilot ATC. So to start the engines for the uh, Twin Otter here. You can just follow my uh, checklist there and watch the uh, actions that I take, and um, you can just uh, just watch along as we get this puppy started. Center, good morning, Canada five eight five level three four zero. Three to six eleven with you here at uh, four zero zero. Three to six eleven, center rider. Set squawk to ta slash ra. Still the 2651, that's nothing worse, it should get uh, better. 
Canadian Express 587 request taxi. Canadian Express 587 taxi to runway 02 via taxiway golf 5. Taxi to runway 02 via taxiways golf 5. Canadian Express 587. Okay, so we've uh, started our engines and now we're just ready to uh, taxi to the runway at Kathmandu. Departure from runway 02. And um, one of the things that you need to adjust is the um, RPM of the engine and the attack angle. So that's what we're going to adjust next. In order to move the plane, you need to adjust the uh, uh, RPM levers and the attack angle so that when you put some throttle on, you actually get some thrust to move the plane. So uh, we'll just uh, taxi down the runway and uh, we've got clearance from air traffic controller for taxi and we'll just give it a little bit of throttle to uh, uh, move the plane down the runway and then uh, we'll be in the air shortly. So what I am showing here before we start the taxi is how to use the reverse thrust because you no need to know how to do that in order to land the plane and you need to program a button on your joystick or keyboard to uh, toggle the reverse thrust otherwise it won't work when you move that throttle from a standing position it'll just go up to the one position but you need to uh, program a, a button on your joystick or keyboard to toggle the reverse thrust and then when you hit that button then it'll go into the reverse thrust mode so this plane will actually go backwards. Uh, you can uh, set that reverse thrust and it'll, it'll go backwards. However, uh, generally you're not given permission to go backwards uh, from the air traffic controller you, uh, and, and ca where you want to avoid using any kind of a pushback or pullout. Uh, because if you're going backwards and put on the brake, suddenly there's a danger that your plane will... Uh, well, up in the air <laughs> so your back end will drop to the ground so that's why uh, you don't uh, don't uh, generally use the reverse thrust to back up the plane but you can use it in an emergency and if you're at a small airport where there's no air traffic controller all right so we're uh, heading down toward the taxiway now to the runway and we'll join you when we get in the air as we're heading down the runway you can see the weather conditions are not very favorable there's very low visibility and we're going to be landing at one of the most dangerous airports in the world so it could be a white knuckle ride for the passengers um, and if it's the visibility is poor, uh, very poor, uh, you won't be able to land. So we'll see how this flight goes and uh, we'll uh, got our waypoints programmed into our GPS and once we get uh, in the air I'll probably just jump cut to more the approach into uh, Luca, the uh, airport and uh, so we'll leave it at that. We've got our clearance from the tower, so um, we'll take off here and uh, on our way to Luca. And the, as I mentioned uh, previously, the autopilot in uh, the Twin Otter is very primitive. I think maybe <laughs> maybe what the White Wright brothers used, uh, but it does give you um, navigation. Uh, it does give you. Um, altitude hold and it does give you speed but you can't have uh, control your speed and the altitude at the same time you can choose one or the other uh, because there's no auto thrust on the plane so um, once we get in the air here uh, initially we'll uh, be climbing 
and we'll you use the indicated airspeed on the auto throttle to basically adjust your climb rate and your descent rate. And once you get up to altitude, then you push the altitude button to hold your altitude at the care thing, and then you adjust the throttle to control your speed. So once you get airborne, there's two things you want to adjust on the uh, autopilot. One is the indicated airspeed. Once you get up to a little over 100, maybe 105 or 110, you can push the indicated airspeed and then your plane will start, start to have a controlled climb. And uh, you also want to push the MAV button because that will lock you into your route. Uh, unless you're given other directions, uh, headings by the air traffic controller, but uh, you want to push the nav button and the indicated airspeed to control both your climb and also uh, your route, your navigation to the, to the route. And uh, once you set those two things, then you can just uh, climb at a controlled uh, uh, rate of rate of climb, and you're uh, be locked into your navigation for uh, uh, taking your route. You'll want to adjust your prop angle and your RPM uh, soon after takeoff so that you can adjust for the optimum climb rate. And so uh, you don't keep the uh, RPM and the angle of attack forward you adjust it up a little bit and that way you can get a steady rate of climb at over a thousand feet per minute and if once you've hit the navigation button then you can uh, get Delta on your route 56, and just to follow the flight so I'll come back once we uh, hit the close to the top of descent and are close to where we want to uh, begin the approach in the Luca All right, so we've hit our cruising altitude and we're uh, beginning to get close to our top of descent and approach into Luca. So uh, we're going to be flying a straight in approach. Uh, there are a couple of options for approach into Luca. You can take a VFR, follow the uh, valley up uh, and have a controlled descent. Uh, however, you never know what the weather is going to be and so uh, one of the advantages of following the navigational route is that uh, you have a, a, a beacon right on the airport so that when you get lost in the clouds you can keep your direction. So the approach we're taking in Deluca today is a very crazy crazy approach and um, we're flying along at 17,000 feet and when we're about 10 miles out we're going to begin our descent and we'll have a gradual descent of about a thousand feet per minute until we get to the edge of a cliff and then we, we descend at uh, 2,500 feet per minute and go straight down uh, in it for a, an approach into Luca and it's a very harrowing, <laughs> harrowing approach, but like I said, because of this weather condition, uh, you, you want a good, uh, uh, you want to stay on your navigation uh, as you can't make a VFR approach on this, even though there is no ILS approach into Luca, at least uh, with the navigational approach, and if you're familiar with the route, you can uh, stay on course monitoring the distances using your navigation GPS and uh, monitoring the angle of descent. So uh, get ready for a harrowing descent into uh, Luca. Uh, we're currently at, at the 17,000 foot mark and as I mentioned previously to start the descent you uh, slow the plane down to about a hundred and 10 miles per hour and we can see we're starting to slow now and then you click on the uh, 
I indicated airspeed and that will give you a controlled descent of a thousand feet per minute and then uh, once you hit about the five mile mark then you have to go into the steep descent right off the cliff into, into Luca and as you can see there's quite a bit of cloud cover so it's going to be a, a fun trip and we'll just monitor things here and make sure that we have a safe landing. So you can see we're into our controlled descent now, less than 10 miles from the airport, descending at about 1,000 feet per minute. And once we clear some of these uh, mountains here, we'll begin our very steep descent down through the clouds into Luca, and uh, that's when it gets to be a bit of a white, <laughs> white knuckle descent. Uh, you certainly couldn't approach this if this is your first time into Luca. Uh, because you really uh, have to know what the VFR flying conditions are. And in this case, we're doing something that you wouldn't ordinarily do, but we're going to just follow the navigational route and uh, follow the controlled descent at the feet per minute that we know will uh, take us in safely. So to adjust your rate of descent in the turboprop, there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, as we're already showing, if you s select the indicated airspeed and reduce the throttle to idle, you descend at about 1,000 feet per minute. However, if you continue that descent angle going into Luca, you'll miss the airport completely. And as I mentioned, when you're about five minutes out, you need to adjust the prop angle there as I've just uh, adjusted and that uh, increases the drag on the plane and you can see now that our uh, descent rate has increased significantly almost to 3,000 feet per minute. In addition to that uh, we're going to add uh, the uh, flaps and so when we land at uh, Luca we're actually going to be with full flaps uh, full um, RPM and a, a full, full forward on the prop angle and also full throttle so it's a very unique landing <laughs> and uh, as you can see now we're coming in uh, dropping our rate of descent and you control the rate of descent using your throttle and once we clear these last few trees here is then we fall off the cliff and descend through the clouds uh, down to the runway. So we're just skimming the top of the trees now and the top of this mountain here and then we'll begin the hurdle of down the cliff to the to the runway and uh, our uh, descent rate increases significantly from this point forward as you can see it dropping here straight through the clouds and you want to keep and hold that at about 2500 feet per minute and uh, until we clear the clouds you need to be in um, control <coughs> with the or in contact with the control tower and Luca to ensure that indeed there is uh, visibility and uh, ability to land <laughs> But uh, right now we're just falling off the cliff and going down through the clouds. And uh, when we emerge from the clouds, we'll be hopefully at the right position for a landing into Luca. So this is about the point where your passengers get out their rosary beads, say a few Hail Marys, and start writing out their last will and testament because... <laughs> Uh, it's a very harrowing approach into uh, Luca, particularly in these uh, weather conditions. So as you emerge from the cloud, you'll see the runway in front of us. And uh, at this point, then you switch to uh, you, uh, take off the autopilot. And you want to fly in the last 
cockpit for just a, um, a landing where you're in complete control of all of the uh, uh, instruments so adjusting your rate of descent your throttle your flaps are on full your uh, props are on full, your throttle's pretty well on full, and so you're coming <laughs> coming in. Now this runway is actually going uphill, so you're coming in on a steep angle, and you're also going uphill, uh, so that helps you to slow down, but it makes for a difficult landing, and it's hard to stick the landing without bouncing because of the angles you're coming in at. And when you get to the top of the hill, then you can uh, park the plane and... Uh, your passengers are at this point are breathing a sigh of relief that they've made it. But their adventure has just begun because this is the base camp for Mount Everest. And so <laughs> they may be stepping over bodies still on their route to the top of Mount Everest. So it's not an adventure for everyone. And there's only a few pilots in the world that are qualified to fly into uh, Luka. But it uh, it's makes for an interesting experience on the flight simulator with X-Plane 11 and uh, uh, we'll just take a look briefly then once we're parked here at uh, reviewing some of the approach. This is just showing you a look around the uh, base camp at Luca and uh, some of the accommodations available for climbers going up Mount Everest. And now let's uh, just take a brief look and video replay at that landing and uh, some of the angles you have to approach at. So this is a slow motion replay of that landing and as you can see it's a pretty steep angle coming in. And the runway itself is on an angle so to stick a landing without bouncing is quite difficult. It's a very short landing strip and it goes uphill. <laughs> so <laughs> we're coming in at a quite a steep angle of attack to begin with and then hitting the runway that's going up uphill which makes it difficult to land without, without bouncing. And uh, this is just showing the uh, slow motion uh, approach here. But uh, we had a safe landing uh, this time, and uh, it's quite an exciting airport to attempt to land at, particularly in the Twin Otter, because it has such uh, primitive controls for both the navigation and uh, adjusting the trim and um, the uh, airlines everything flaps on arrival. The wings of the Twin Otter are very narrow so you don't really float very well. Uh, if you cut power you drop like a stone which is uh, why you have the props uh, at the full angle of attack. And, uh, but uh, you can, can land in short runways and in the, some of the most difficult uh, airports and conditions in the world uh, using the Twin Otter which is why it's still in service today. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a try flying from Kathmandu to VNLK the base camp at Mount Everest.